Welcome back to Big Board. You know what? I haven't done Shrink Rip in forever. I just have either received the game so late that there are already 54 of them out there on the plethora of YouTube channels, or I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> either way. So let's have a look. Uh, I've been uh, I've been interested in Arden 2 for quite a while. Uh, the original... I had an opportunity to play, and uh, two buddies of mine had set it up and played it the day before, and I had a more than lackluster experience. And so when I turned up to play with them on, I think it was a Saturday morning, they had the game all set up and they said, hey, look, you know, we, we can play, but this sucks. And I said, wow, really? Uh, what are the alternatives? And so we ended up playing another game. Uh, but uh, it's it. I, I can't. So I can't really comment on whether or not uh, the original was a great game, a good game, an average game, or that it sucked. All I can share with you is that two war gamers who have played a lot of war games, and I've played a lot of war games with them, and we tend to have, you know, generally speaking, equivalent opinions uh, on things, didn't enjoy it. All that being equal and said, uh, the standard combat system tends to sort of throw the history book out the door once you get going, just because of the way the system's done, I think, and things get wacky quickly. So I am sure that back in the day it was now, I think, 30 years ago when Arden was originally released. So, uh, you know, things change. Now, uh, the good news is that recent releases, some of the re recent releases of uh, SCS titles have been quite good. And, uh, and in fact, uh, we tend to, in the past, to tend to play the SCS titles kind of as a break from doing something heavier. And it was not meant to be a historical lesson exercise. Uh, it was more of a what if and let's see what the system does and no one had to think real hard about uh, what the rules were because you had that standard set of rules, right? So anyway, let's have a look, right? I, I've got the shrink off it already. Beautiful cover art. Uh, I will say I think that uh, MMP has uh, lifted their game significantly in the cover art stakes and has certainly uh, certainly doing a lot better than some of the other larger manufacturers, uh, uh, publishers uh, that are out at the moment. So the classic, got a little bit of a screenshot of the game, got a background here. It's going to be medium complex complexity, okay, and it's going to be medium solitaire, okay. That's a, that's a safe way to say things, I suppose. I would really call this low complexity, I think. I mean, it's not hard. It's like eight pages or ten pages of rules. Plus some special module stuff. So, uh, scenarios. There's a bunch. Uh, two, four, six. We will be, after this video, setting up a smaller single map scenario because I don't have the room to do much more than that at the moment. But if that all goes well, we'll play one or two more single map scenarios, assuming there are some. And uh, at some point, if all does go incredibly well, we'll actually set the campaign up and give it a run. Uh, Arden two components. Now, what's missing on the back here is that there are a there's a CRT card or a, a, a chart card. There are two of those that are going to be in this box. There was a little bit of a mishap, which they caught before the the, ma the majority of the shipping began, and uh, the CRTs are now included include, included in the box. So let's have a look. So once again, great art, right? That's yeah, very uh, thematic. So uh, we're going to have some charts, like I said. Here's, uh, there should be two of these in here somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> so your standard CRT, there are some uh, unique specific rules to uh, holds here that we can maybe visit when we uh, open the rule book. We'll have a have a talk about them. I've already uh, had a quick read of the rules, special rules for the, excuse me, for the module, pretty standard stuff on the back. DG effects, barrage markers, air supply for artillery. <clears throat> air supply is a function of the number of airstrikes you receive. So you'll, if you get eight airstrikes, which would be a lot, uh, you uh, you can use some or all of them to deliver 
uh, supply to units which will allow them to remove DGs and stuff like that. And there's this concept of half reconciliation uh, for barrages that we'll get to in a second. We'll, and I'll, I'll try not to forget that. Your standard, hey, here's the stuff that should be in the box. Two very cheap dice don't roll well. And if they're not in the box when you, uh, when you get the game, don't be upset. Just get some other dice out. <laughs> I've never used these guys. Don't like the way they roll. All right, two counter sheets. Now, here's, here's where there will be significant differences from the original, I, I believe, anyway, uh, is that uh, in this one mile a hex, uh, is it one day eternal? Let's see. Yeah, one one day turn. Uh, you're gonna you have a lot more units here, uh, and uh, so a little bit more fidelity that's been picked up from the BCS system. And in fact, there's a little nod into BCS here uh, in the in the notes, but also in a couple of the little mechanics. And there's also a little bit of uh, grafting and uh, adoption uh, for let's call it uh, gameplay mechanic purposes or design for effect purposes the concept of a zoc bond uh, is in here as well which is a simonich uh, uh, mechanism uh, so we'll we'll talk about how that gets uh, that gets used so I, i'm not going to get into detail on the counters you can see they're all in here the formations are color coded uh, we if you've played an scs game before you'll know that the yellow bar across the bottom denotes that it is indeed a exploit capable unit which will be a phase in the game turn uh all the units that are blank on the back are single step everybody else is a two-stepper so that's all pretty generic and standard all the yanks all that armor look at all that what do we got there fourth cab third armor fourth armored seventh armored you name it it's there tenth armored then all the airborne and the infantry chappies. Lots and lots and lots and lots of artillery. Goodness me. Is there a lot of artillery on this for, for these guys? One thing I did note with the uh, reading of the rules is that there seems to be a heavy emphasis on artillery in this particular <coughs> module and its effects and how, how it's applied. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out in the game. And it'll probably make me go uh, pull out the... Uh, Pull out some history stuff and see how important it was in the entire battle as a whole. Now, of course, you've got your standard series rules. Eight pages, I was right, not 12. So this is, let's see, what version are we at now? 1.8. So that'll be the latest, I think. Uh, I, I, I'm obviously, duh. Uh, but uh, I have uh, not... Oh, and it's full color this time, too. Very nice. <coughs> I will have a quick look at this. I, I'm gonna, going to assume that 99% of this has really not changed very much. In fact, there should be a little note in here somewhere talking about what's changed. Well, we can look here. We'll read that later on. I should have read that before we started the video, but that's okay. So let's see if I can get the two maps laid out and then I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i restart the video. All right, let's continue and have a look here. So first things first, we just, uh, let's scoot over here a little bit. We've got, and uh, unfortunately, I have to do it like this. So we've got some charts on the map. Uh, I'm not sure why, but there are charts on the map. So weather table, US airstrikes, bridge blown table, and the train effects. I could see how that should be on 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 here, but uh, there you go. And then obviously turn record as well. So. This is just running through December 16 through 31. So there's that aspect of it. You know, I don't know why we just couldn't have those charts on the, uh, you know, on a, on, a, on a separate card somewhere. There's lots of room. Is there lots of room? I think there's lots of room on this guy. You know, we could have put the air and weather on here. That would have been nicer. I just like to have them, the maps be more immersive. Oh, there's two more tables all the way over here. What have we got? We've got the bridge blown table, which, you know, is in the rules and the VDH success table, which I'm sure is in the rules as well. Uh, we'll get to the rules in a minute. So let's see if I can zoom out a little bit for you and not, um, ah, come here. Let me just tighten up the, well, let's do it this way. So we've got the 
so we started in Germany with the, Sch the Schnee Eiffel uh, defenses and the Ore River there, right? Maps look great, by the way. I mean, they're beautiful looking. And then you've got all the places that you would expect to see. Bastogne is here, covered up by my bumping of the map on two occasions. Bastogne, Hufalais, we'll scroll up here a little ways. Spa is up here, just here. And then we go deep across to the Meuse, all the way down there and that's going to be your play area with the uh, reinforcement entry areas marked on the map and you'll see let's see if i can dig in on uh here we go a lot of bridges can uh, potentially be blown as you can see here right so we can blow that bridge and there's a table for that on the map and in the rule book very cool all right so uh Interestingly enough, so we've got, whoa, caught it just in time. <laughs> uh, main roads or roads, and then the rest, everything else that you see is, a, is gonna be a track. And the red, what is this red line here? This must be some sort of uh, demarcation for, oh, national border. There we go, borders, slopes, uh, we have forest, woods, so forest. Well, I guess it would help if I actually pointed so you could see what I'm pointing at. Let me move the camera again. I was looking over at the train effects chart uh, on the map. So slopes, forest, woods, and then uh, the Muse is a dark blue line, and uh, these are all just regular rivers. Or, and then, then we have streams as well, so streams, rivers. And there are traffic jam locations. Uh, yes, here we go. Here as well, right? So uh, all sorts of fun stuff in there. Uh, some concepts that will no doubt be applied differently, but we're gonna have, now have a look at the rules. So some concepts that we've seen from other games in the past, and other systems in the past. Okay, uh, the very first thing that's gonna be completely different in, in this game is zones of control. Uh, in uh, not really in the game as they have been in the past for the system. So we're, we're now using a concept called Zoc Bonds, and those of you that have played uh, a Simonich game will be familiar with those, a Mark Simonich game. This is a slightly different, and uh, it has to have a minimum number of steps in place, and there are posts at each end so uh, you know you have a unit here and a unit here and you'll be able to form a Zoc bond uh, so that's a, a post here and a post here if you want to use that uh, that concept and it, it all it does is affect the uh, movement cost it doesn't have any other effect so similar idea but it doesn't require uh, the stopping I don't believe it's not going to stop uh, units from yeah it's not going to stop units from moving. It's just going to enforce uh, some, some extra movement points. So it's allowing you to spread your forces out, basically, and, uh, and slow the enemy down, Or but it will impact retreating. Uh, Exploit-capable units, we know all about that. Uh, let's see. So uh, some of the terrain effects are going to be applied in combat slightly differently because uh, I don't recall in the past having... Usually you just pick the best terrain effect of the hex but here we're taking the best terrain effect of the hex plus the hex side effect and that may well be a standard rule but it's it's called out here separately so i'm assuming that it's not number one uh sequence of play let's have a quick look back over here so we're going to go through all the pre-turn nonsense you know weather determination how many airstrikes we get do you roll a d6 for that then apply the air supply uh, allocate air supply put the reinforcements uh down and then uh, remove all the bar uh, barrage and DG markers uh, for both sides. The Germans will go through barrage from marker removal, then do their movement and barrage. Uh, units cannot move and barrage in the same turn. Uh, US uh, barrage, ha US half uh, reconciliation. We'll get to that in a second. Combat, exploit, German supply. 
makes sense. And then U.S. turn barrage marker removal, uh, movement and barrage, U.S. half reconciliation, combat exploit, U.S. supply. So uh, synchronous, except for, hang on, yes, uh, synchronous except for the fact that the uh, U.S. will be allowed to barrage in the German turn before combat, which will uh, obviously lead the uh, the U.S. to be doing a lot of uh, disrupting of and DGing of the enemy before they execute their attacks. So that would be a pretty standard technique, I am sure. Movement and combat, the uh, traffic jams are uh, prevalent in the game. You're going to need to, it's going to be pretty straightforward, though, how that's going to work. Um, it's only for, I think it's only for the first uh, couple of turns anyway, as, as it says here. And then divisional integrity. Now, that's something I did not read that. I skipped over that. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Divadi's got to have a uh, spot from its own division. Independent units are not assigned. Can stack with any division without penalty. No more than one division units are stacked together. The stack is DG at the end of the... Con oh, if more than one division's units are stacked together, we're going to have a, D a DG situation. <coughs> um, also, I'm just looking for stacking limits in this particular game. Not seeing it yet. We'll get to it, I'm sure. If not, it'll be standard, whatever that is. So, uh, combat... Uh, these mandated holds are really a, a means of, let's see here, hold becomes mandatory when there's, uh, and there can be no retreat before combat if the defender is DG under an enemy barrage in a city or, cont or contains any leg MA. Uh, so these mandatory holds might uh, cause the uh, US some problems. Be interesting to see how that all plays out. The other thing that I thought was pretty different was barrages. There's this concept where you may get a result that's a half barrage, and then depending on how many times you barrage that hex, so if you get two half barrages, once you do that reconciliation, it'll convert to one full DG, one full barrage, and then you will also uh, uh, roll a die if there's only one half barrage marker on the map, uh, on the counter, on the hex, you will roll a die, and it may convert to be a full barrage, or it may just come off the actual... Um, come off the actual unit that was being attacked. I'm going to mute my phone so we don't get any calls. Uh, so that's basically how that works. Pretty straightforward. Uh, oh, there is there is also some impact from uh, barrages for, because uh, you're attacking a hex, before the, uh, the US is able to move th uh, through its own barrages uh, just with a plus one penalty. There's some other penalties that apply for the Germans. Uh, and that barrage will stay in that hex for the for the turn as well. It doesn't move with the unit. So not only do you do do you DG the units in the hex if you're successful, but you're also going to leave kind of a uh, a, uh, a speed bump for the enemy as well. Artillery and supply. There are some specifics there. And then there's a means of blowing bridges. You've got to have a unit within a certain range, and then you roll D6, and off you go. Uh, German special rules, of course, we've got to have the Vonda Height and we've got to have the 150th Panzer Brigade and the rubber boats for second Panzer. <coughs> Excuse me. Airborne arrival is a unit placement as opposed to... Uh, so I, I haven't actually read this and looked at where they come in uh, on the map, so can't really comment too much about that. And I think that's going to be it for, for special rules. So it's just how the airborne arrives, 82nd and 101st. VP locations, whoever's... Whoever's got the mostest wins. And then there's a six hexes, uh, six hexes, six uh, scenarios. Now, I will be playing the uh, breakthrough campaign on map B to start with. Potentially Kampf group, Kampf group Piper. That might be fun to get a, get a start on. And, you know, I think a lot of these scenarios are going to be almost like simplified direct lifts from uh, last Blitzkrieg from the BCS system. Yeah, the goose egg. Okay, so yeah, there's the goose egg scenario. And then a Screaming Eagle scenario. Use both maps, really. But south of... So we might be able to squeeze that one in. I'm not sure. And tip of the spear, map A. That might work out okay as well for us to play that. 
uh, starts on turn nine. If you can see that, okay. I'm actually looking at, I should be looking through the viewfinder, but I'm not. And then uh, some nice notes in here. We can, we can read all that later. Uh, you can probably download all those and have a look yourself. You don't need me to uh, uh, read all that. Oh, there is a bugging out rule in here. I just saw a commentary about that. Uh, it reminds me of the BCS system when you retreat, where you just pick your unit up and move it away three hexes. Here, however, artillery, when, uh, when the enemy moves adjacent to you, you need to bug out. And that will be a eight hex move. Uh, so pretty substantial. So that's going to have a significant effect on the game, particularly if the Germans want to attempt to not have those barrages affecting them for the, uh, any given combat they're about to execute. They're going to want to try and get into the rear there and force those, uh, force those artillery units out of the way, out of the game play zone where the, uh, you know, where the focus of the effort is. So that could be very interesting. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. 20 minutes. Sorry that took so long, but lots of stuff to talk about in this game. I'm going to go set it up. I'll have a look. Roll some dice. Talk to you soon. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. Bye.